Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another ship fitting guide for EVE Echoes. Today we're looking at another one of the Tier 7 Assault Frigates, this time the Amar Empire Punisher Assault. This little gold and red bullet of death is one of the ships that I've been waiting for since the game launched. I absolutely adore this ship, it's got a lot of potential, a lot of power to it, and it's a very interesting and fun ship to play. You can also play it kind of like a little mini succubus, um, although this is kind of what we're going to go over in this video. So today we're going to talk about the Punisher Assault. We're going to look at what this ship is, what it does. We're going to look at how you can fit this, how to fly it, um, and just go over all the different uses that this kind of ship has. Because the Assault Frigates are a little bit unusual compared to some of the others that I've covered on this channel otherwise. Anyway, if you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, and ding that notification bell so that you know when the next video goes live. If you've got a particular topic you want to see me cover in a future video, or a ship you want me to do a ship fitting guide on, let me know in the comment section down below as well, but do be aware that ship fitting guides, of course, take a bit of time to come through, as I've got to source the ship, all the fittings, try it out, and then record it. Finally, if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by joining us on Patreon. Details are on screen now. That said and done, let's jump right into talking about the Punisher Assault. This ship is of course found in the Amar Empire ship tree, and like the other Assault Frigates, you'll go up the Frigate branch to Tech Level 7, and there she blows, Punisher Assault. Now looking at this ship, I've got to say I'm normally not a fan of the Amar Empire sort of ostentatious ivory and gold, but that deep crimson and gold is a very handsome colour scheme, very cool looking ship. I love how this one looks, like some kind of prowling shark drifting through a belt, and if you know me in my thrashes, that's uh, <laughs> definitely a theme. It's actually very reminiscent as well of the Retribution class Assault Frigate from EVE Online. Um, I think that's what this ship is definitely inspired by and it's definitely what I took the inspiration for for fitting. So let's actually have a look at its attributes and profile. Here you can see that the fitting profile is like any of the Faction Frigates and the Assault Frigates, threes across the board. Three high slots, three mid slots, three low slots, three power grid rigs, three mechanical rigs, lots and lots of threes. Looking at its defences here, 3,060 total defence. This makes it the tankiest of all of the uh, of all of the assault frigates. Very, very tanky little ship here. Most of that is in armour at 970, but it does have a decent enough structure of 793. Shields suffer a little bit, as you'd expect. It's in a Mar ship of 659. Definitely an armour tanked ship, this one. Heading down, you'll see it's got a very small signature radius, 31.5 meters, actually makes it almost as small as the Breacher Assault. It's right down there, actually. It's smaller than the Executioner 2, believe it or not. Um, Executioner 2, of course, being one of the Tier 4 Assault... Fr uh, it, sorry, Interceptor Frigates. This actually has a smaller signature radius, but that flight velocity of 359 is a lot slower, and obviously speed tanking requires both a small signature radius and a small uh, and a high flight velocity. This ship does not have the flight velocity really required for proper full-on speed tanking, but we'll come to that later because that is one of the big advantages of the assault ships. Looking at the trait descriptions, of course, being an assault ship, it's got that roll bonus of plus five seconds to the damage control activation time. That means the damage control unit, rather than being 13 seconds in duration, lasts for a whopping 18 seconds. Keeps you alive a lot longer. It has that same advanced micro warp drive operation bonus as the other assault frigates, minus 10% to warp drive signature radius penalty, and 5% reduction to warp drive capacitor need. It only says warp drive, but that does apply to the micro warp drive, not your ship's innate warp drive. A little bit confusing there, but I have tested that, and I can confirm it is micro warp drive signature radius penalty and micro warp drive capacitor requirement. Obviously, 50% reduction to that penalty and 20% reduction to 25% uh, reduction, sorry, to the warp drive capacitor need. Advanced Frigate Command on these ships normally gives a bonus to the weapon system. In this case, that is still true. 7.5% small laser damage and 10% uh, small laser capacitor need. That means at full level 5, you're doing 37.5% extra DPS with the small lasers, and you're reducing the capacitor requirement by 50%, which allows the ship to maintain capacitor stability that little bit more. Armor resistance goes up by 4% as well. That is, of course, 20% of full skills. 20% extra armor resistance is always a nice thing to have on a ship, especially if it's going to be getting nice and close and armor tanking is going to be a thing. Definitely, definitely an armor tank. Like the Drumiel, the Succubus, and indeed the Merlin Assault before it, this Punisher Assault was built and supplied by my resident ship building genius, Toby, whose efforts to keep me stocked with the latest and greatest in frigate engineering are very much appreciated, so huge thanks and shout out to you, Toby. 
Now looking at how to fit this in the high slots, I've gone for a full complement of Rebel Small Pulse Lasers, three of these to be precise. Obviously, whichever best Small Pulse Lasers you can get your grubby mitts on are what you're going to be going for. We're going to be up close and personal, yes, slap it on a t-shirt, we're going to be up close and personal and punching them in the face, so we want whichever weapon has the highest DPS and the highest tracking speed. In this case, the tracking speed of these, 469. That is a massive speed that it should be able to keep up with the super fast orbit we're going to have maintained. Hopefully, at least. I've tested it. Of course it works. Now, because we are going to be so close and we're using energy weapons being in a Marship, a small energy Nosferatu feels kind of like it is highly recommended at this point. We're going to be in that 4km optimal range without worry, so we want to be able to drain capacitor from their ship into ours to make sure we maintain capacitor stability so that we can keep blasting almost indefinitely. Now for the second of the mid slots here, I've gone for two sets of interruptive warp disruptors. Warp jammer strength of four, very useful for locking a target down. Obviously, once they become available, I would swap one of these out for a warp scrambler, because it's going to have the higher warp jammer strength and the shorter range, and also shut off their micro warp drive, stopping them uh, to actually escape from you. Very, very useful, and I cannot wait for warp scramblers to be added. This ship is going to have more kill marks than I dare to even count. Now, of course, being an assault ship, looking at the uh, bonuses for it, we've got bonuses, of course, to damage control activation time and warp drive signature radius penalties, micro warp drive skills. So guess what two of our low slots are going to be? That's right, we've gone for an all-round damage control unit, 8.64% increase to all of my resistances, whether they're shield, armor, structure, whether they're electromagnetic, thermal, kinetic, or explosive, all of those are boosted up by 8.64% just for having this fitted. I can then activate it, and those, bo uh, those bonuses will be boosted up by 800%, which makes for an incredibly tanky, heavy resistance ship for, that, uh, for those 18 seconds. And 18 seconds in combat is actually a remarkable length of time. Seriously, don't underestimate how powerful that, 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 that duration can be. It does have a reactivation delay of 150 seconds, so for the next two and a half minutes you can't use it, which does kind of suck, but you should be up close right in the middle of that field of ships. You hit all of the ones you want to hit, and it, you shouldn't need the damage control for, a, for an extended length of time. When it's off cooldown, hopefully you're about ready for the next wave, or you're ready to escape and make your uh, runaway, at which point the damage control unit is there. Basically, the damage control unit helps us absorb damage on the inbound and outbound journey. The second low slot, of course, is a Gisty C-Type small micro warp drive. Any small micro warp drive will do, but the better you can get, obviously, um, the, the, it should be the one you fit on. In this case, I've gone for the Gisty C-Type. You can see here that gives me a flight velocity adjustment of 532%, but only a signature radius adjustment of 248%. That's thanks to the skill bonuses on this particular ship. And when I get micro warp, advanced micro warp drive operation up to skill level 5, that, will, that signature radius adjustment will actually drop a little bit more. But crikey, that is a 210 hour skill. Yo, it takes some time to train, even with COG-3 and, and, and Duo Omega. It takes some time. We'll get there eventually, I'm sure. Anyway, the third and final mid slot is uh, low slot is one that we can actually change. Now, when I demonstrate this in a moment, you should see why I've personally gone for a knight small armor repairer. To me, it is just a bit safer to go with a knight small armor repairer because you can repair any incidental damage that your armor happens to take. And of course, armor does not recharge over time like shields do, so you do want to you need a module fitted in order to actually repair that. In the case here, that I just find that a little bit safer to use, but if you're playing things a little bit riskier, or if you're going for sort of a PvP build where you're not expecting them to be able to hit you, then you can actually swap this out for a heat sink. That will actually push the DPS quite comfortably way over the 200 mark there, and with an activated heat sink, I think it actually pushes it up to over 220, and that's based on basic rigs, as you'll see now. Now, the rigs I've gone for here, I've gone for two, well, sorry, a single laser collision accelerator, 12.5 flat damage increase, and then two laser burst aerators, 7.5% reduction to the activation time. Now, because the ship has bonuses to damage already, I tend to go for whichever one the ship doesn't have. If the ship has bonuses to activation time, go for flat damage. If the ship has flat damage bonuses, go for activation time reduction. That's kind of the theory I go for, and the maths tends to work out on that as the better option. 
Now for the mechanical rigs though, we've gone for auxiliary thrusters, obviously increase the flight velocity, faster moving ship, always going to be useful on a frigate, inertia modifier adjustment because I'm going to be orbiting at a very short range at a ridiculous uh, spitting distance basically, assuming you can spit over a kilometer which quite frankly I can't, but we're going to be orbiting around the one to two kilometer mark so we need to have a fast and tight orbit. Third and final slot then is a dynamic fuel valve, which just reduces the amount of capacitor that the micro warp drive is going to require because that does have to be active pretty much 24 seven. Anyway, enough of the fitting, let's actually take this out into space and showcase it in action. So to demonstrate the Punisher Assault in action, I'm currently warping into a tier seven angel small anomaly and we'll see how we do. Hopefully we're not going to get blown up on this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen one day in a video. You just know it's going to happen one day. Anyway, so here we are. We're a fair distance away from everything. We can lock on super quickly because these are all cruisers and above. Let's go for the... Ooh, let's go for the bellicose first. We're going to warp in at zero, hit that micro warp drive. I'm going to zoom the camera out a little bit so I can see everything that I'm flying towards. Obviously, if I'm going in a straight line like this, I have no angular velocity at all, which means these ships are going to be able to hit me quite comfortably. Let's activate the damage control while I get into range. We're then going to uh, smack on the Nosferatu and my lasers. Now you'll see you slingshot the first arrival there. I went all the way past about three kilometers, two kilometers. Now we're in range up close hitting them at the sort of two one kilometer mark. That is a much better orbit to have. And with that micro warp drive active, I'm still orbiting at a whopping 1,200, 1,300 meters per second. That is a very fast speed for angular velocity. Now you can see my shields obviously are taking a hammering, that's fine. There's almost no shield so to speak of in regards to this particular ship. Once we start to get down to the armor, I will switch on the armor repairer and you'll see that we'll actually tank this quite comfortably for quite a period of time. Actually the damage I'm taking has slowed right down anyway now that I'm this close. Anyway, so now we're down to what, I think that's 4% on the armor. Now we're taking armor damage, cool. We activate the armor repairer, which again, armor repairers only actually heal their armor at the end of a cycle. You can see there it's pushing up. So this Giston Bellicose is going to uh, slowly go down. The armor is taking a bit of a punishment at the moment. That's quite all right. As long as it doesn't hit zero, we're comfortable. That Bellicose is dying very, very slowly. Well, okay, not very slowly. That armor, uh, that Bellicose is going down. Once that's down, that is less damage that we're going to be taking, so that we'll have a better time in regards to actually healing that armor. It's just understanding that at this point in time, yes, my armor's low. No, that's not a problem. We're quite comfortable with that. There's no need to panic. We can now move in on the Cyclone there. I think the Cyclone is going to be the next one we go for. So let's warp through there quickly. Faster I can get back to uh, a combat range, the better I'm going to be doing on this one. There we go. Slingshot through, go past the two kilometer out to four kilometer. Then we start curling back in three kilometers, two kilometers, one kilometer. And we should start to eventually stabilize that orbit at around the three to two kilometer mark. And you'll see there, the armor is now repairing upwards. I will actually hit full armor very soon. Then my shields will even start repairing. This is the great thing about the Punisher Assault because your armor tanking you take a bit of damage on the armor whilst you take out that first chip once that first chips down you can actually keep going for long so there's there we are shields have just poked their head up to say hi uh, before, before getting blapped away again and so that will keep going let's slowly pull down the cyclone if you've uh, ever seen anything to do with cyclones you'll know how tanky these ships are um, but we're through the shields now into the armor the armor is obviously a smaller aspect of their tank here we go. And I'm, in, I'm maintaining pretty good capacitor stability here as well, thanks to that energy Nosferatu. You can see we're still sitting around sort of the 65% mark there. That's not going to go down anytime soon. In fact, due to how our capacitors recharge, we should see that actually start to move uh, further and further up and stabilize, I imagine, around the 75% mark. But we'll see. We'll see. There we are. The Cyclone is now almost halfway through its armor which means we can start to take that on. Anyway, let's have a look at this one up close. As I said in the in the Cyclone video, this thing does remind me somewhat of a battering ram. It and, and its application as a ship is not far off either. It's just a big, heavy thing that you punch your opponent with until they explode, and it's blasted difficult to shift. You can see I'm doing like 400 damage a shot here, and it barely moves around the actual armor. It, it's just insane. And this is not even an armor tank. This is a shield tank ship. It's just got that much tank to it in general. 
Anyway, the damage control unit has finally come off cooldown, which is going to be nice. We're going to go after that hurricane next. You can see the hurricane is 20 kilometers away, um, which does, of course, mean that it is going to take... Uh, I am going to lose angular velocity as I go towards it. Lower angular velocity means that turrets have no difficulty at all tracking me, and that means I will probably take some damage as I go across, especially since I've got a micro warp drive active, which, if we check on the fitting page now under navigation... Sorry, not under navigation, under targeting, has me at a whopping 110 meters signature radius that is a cruiser sized signature radius on a frigate but not a problem at all you can see at this point in time the fact that i'm doing 1300 to 1400 meters per second in an orbit at one to two kilometers makes me exceptionally hard to hit for turrets and the 1400 meters per second means that even missiles don't actually do that much damage to me um, either just because i'm such a fast moving target they would need to have a ridiculously high explosion velocity to apply damage correctly um, to a ship like this and being small as well yeah, it is a, a, a bit of a nightmare at the moment for anything that is uh, not overly strong on the webs. There we are now that we're moving towards the Hurricane. Activate the damage control unit, set the orbit there on the Hurricane. Let's have a look at what that pushes me up to in the fittings on the defences. Yep, effective hit points of 13,319 on a frigate. Look at those shield uh, defences. That's 69% electromagnetic, 85% on explosive, and the armour is even worse. 88% electromagnetic, only 80% on explosive. 13,000 effective hit points on a frigate with resistances above 80%. That's just mad. I think at this point as well, we can actually probably start to turn off the armour repairer um, just for a little bit of time to see how much damage we do actually take from this. There we are, it's just done its activation. As you can see, we're pulling that hurricane down at a fair pace, and 2% damage. 2% damage is all it can deal to me in one go. Crikey, it doesn't seem worth putting the armor repairer on full time. You can just cycle that a few times and see how it, uh, and, and how it tops up. Again, now the hurricane's at about half of its, uh, half of its armor. This is the advantage of these assault frigates. These assault frigates consistently do high DPS. This is just with Mark 1 rigs and meta level 8 turrets. Obviously, if I took the meta level 11 turrets of Dead Space and I fit this with the, uh, the Mark 2 rigs, the uh, level 2 rigs, that DPS is going to go up even higher. And as you can see at this point, if this was the kind of combat you were coming into, then the fact that I've taken that shield damage and the armor is going down so slightly, you could probably get away with swapping to a heatsink. I don't personally recommend it for PvE, but if you're going PvP hunting, you just go for the whole I will outlast my opponent. You go on a 1v1, you get this nice close orbit of 2 kilometers. you activate your damage control unit so that you take almost no damage at all for that period of uh, 18 seconds, and you just hammer them with everything you've got. You activate the heatsink for what I think it, on a ship like this at that point it'd be well over 220 DPS and if they're a shield tank like a Caracal you are just going to cut through that tank like a knife through hot butter yeah anyway I think that does actually wrap up everything pretty much I want to say here about the Punisher Assault I love this ship to pieces I cannot wait to now get a scrambler on this when those are finally added to the game I will be taking this up into low second going hunting so if you're in a mining ship do keep your eyes open for Captain Benzie turning up in a Punisher Assault I want to get some kill marks on this thing and see what they actually look like on this because I'm curious I'm curious I know what they look like on my on my Dramiel and my Succubus and even the Merlin Assault but I'm not sure what they look like on this one We'll find out, I guess. We'll find out. Follow me on Twitter and you'll see me post those kill markings as I get them. Anyway, speaking of Twitter, why not take a screenshot of, your, uh, of what you're doing in the game, post it to your Twitter with the hashtag CSKL. I do love to check through your screenshots. Just see what kind of cool looking ships you guys are using. It does interest me. I've seen some really nice screenshots there. Otherwise, let me know what you think of the Punisher Assault or the other Assault Frigates as you're using them. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden. Or maybe, better hope I don't see you in New Eden.